Today on our 2008 Toyota Tundra, we're going to take a look at then install the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Air Springs with the internal jounce bumpers. These are going on the rear axle. The part number is AL88299. Now, before we load some weight in our vehicle, let's get a measurement to see what our factory ride height is. And it looks like we're going to have about 39 and a half inches to the inside edge of our rear fender. And we'll have about 36 and 5 eighths of an inch to the inside edge of our front fender. Now we're going to load up our water tank. It's got about 250 gallons in it. Now we've added about a thousand pound water tank to the back of the truck here. Let's get another measurement. Looks like now we're down to about 37 and a quarter inches. So it's dropped our truck nearly two and a quarter inches. Here on the front, our truck has actually risen about three eighths of an inch. We're now at 37 inches to the inside of that fender well. We've got the load installed in the bed of the truck again after we've completed the airbag installation. Now with the included jount stops, we've only come down to 38 inches now. So we've already gained back three quarters of an inch, but let's put some air in to see if we can't get it right back to our factory ride height. Yep. Touch more. As you can see now, we're right back at the 39 and a half inches that we originally had for our original factory height. This is gonna give us great level in the truck and maintain all of those factory ride characteristics that we enjoy. Now, as you can see here, we're back at the front tire. And if you remember, initially when we measured this, we had 36 and 5 eighths of an inch from the ground to the level of our fender. After we, ate, we added our weight, that lifted our front end, so that took some of the pressure off of our front tires and kind of changed some of the ride characteristics of the truck. We've got our airbags installed now. We've got them aired up. We're gonna take another measurement. And as you can see there, it's exactly at the 36 and the 5 8 right back to that original factory ride characteristics. We're gonna have equal weight distribution front and rear. The side to side movement is going to be helped limited by our airbags. It's really going to help the performance and the ride quality. And by adding just 45 pounds of air, we're right back to our factory specifications. The airbag is going to have a maximum PSI rating of 100 pounds, so you can really get these adjusted to fit your load perfectly. As you can see as we go through the course, the airbags are going to help to reduce any kind of strain on the rear suspension and compensate for uneven loads. It's going to help to level out our vehicle right back to the factory ride height to help improve our steering and braking performance. Here you'll see us doing the slalom before the airbags are installed. We've got a lot of roll side to side, a lot of shifting. As we go around the corner, we're going to start the alternating speed bumps. You just see how the truck's shifting and moving. And watch the bounce once we get onto these solid speed bumps. It's really going to be moving up and down quite a bit. With the springs installed, we're going to take the same course at about the same speed and the same load in the rear. As you can see now as we do the slalom, we have a lot better control. These helper springs are really helping out the handling characteristics of the truck, and we don't have near as much body roll as we did before. Now check it out as we go through the bumps. Really helping out that rear suspension, making sure we're not putting undue stress on it. And it's really eliminating a lot of that up and down movement that we saw before without the springs installed. Let's start by getting our airbag assembled for you. We're going to take our upper mounting plate and the oblong hole will be positioned over the larger hole that we have. And then as you'll see there, just kind of maneuvering it around a little bit, we'll get our appropriate holes lined up. Now this one's going in the driver's side of the vehicle. The passenger side of the vehicle will use the other two holes that you see there. For these, we just got a, it's a flat top screw or flat top bolt. Takes an Allen key. And we're going to torque these down to the specified foot pounds that's in the manual. We've done that before we added our 90 degree swivel. Found that if we do that after, our Allen key as we turn it wants to hit the swivel each time. We can now take our 90 degree fitting, we're going to thread that in. It's got thread locking tape on it. This is our air fitting, so it's going to help seal that up real well. Now what we do with these is we'll 
get them hand tight. And then from there, we'll use a wrench. And we want to go one and a half turns. So we'll bring our wrench all the way back around to here. That'll be our first. And then we'll bring our wrench to where it ends over here. And that'll be our half. Now let's go ahead and torque our bolts down. Again, check your, owner, or your instruction manual. It'll tell you how tight these need to be. Now's when we want to be careful. We don't want to hit this on our table or anything like that. It's a fragile fitting. So just kind of flip your bag over. Just allow that to rest off to the side. Now the same side of the bag that our air fitting is on is the side we need the flange on our lower bracket to be on. Before that goes into place, we will put our roll cup on. See there, we can line up our holes and then we'll bring in our lower flange. You see we've got the three pieces lined up. We'll now take our 3 8 bolt, lock washer and washer. We'll thread that in. And let's torque those down as well. As you can see there's going to be our completed airbag kit. Now let's head under the truck and take care of a few things there. First step on the underside is going to be to bend our brake bracket. This is a steel bracket. We need to bend this kind of forward, out and away from our leaf spring and from the axle. As you can see that's going to give us that little bit of extra room and if need be, we can make another adjustment to it later. Now we're going to cut our jounce out. This is sitting right on top of the leaf springs that you can see here. What we need to do is measure up from the bottom. There's a little bracket or a little plate right there. We'll measure up from that three quarters of an inch. All right, and then just connect the dots. And that'll be the line that we're actually going to cut that stop out on. All right, with that out of the way, we can fit our airbag in. You'll see here that with our two brackets, we're going to have a short arm and a long arm. We want the short arm to be faced in. They're going to be right above our hole locations here. And that's what's going to grab onto the frame rail of the truck. That'll be sitting right in there. Now we're going to position the airbag right up in the slot between where we cut out the jounce and this bracket that you see here that's where our jounce makes contact. There's a large round hole. Our air fitting will go right through there. And for the two studs that stick down, we've got the two larger holes here to accommodate those. We'll now just guide our air fitting up through the oblong hole. Just kind of slide our bag in position as you see there. We'll center the lower bracket over the lower leaf spring. And we'll just kind of center up those studs and the two holes that are made to accommodate it. Now we'll bring our bracket up, place it on top. Then one of the carriage bolts will go up through and then we'll put a flat washer and a nylon lock nut. And we'll put our other one here on the outside. And we're gonna put the same carriage bolt, flat washer and nut on each of them. Now we'll use our ratchet and start tightening down our bolt. We'll do it in kind of an even cross pattern. We'll now go through and torque them down to our specifications that you'll find in the instructions. Again, we'll use a cross pattern. It's now time to attach the lower brackets to our leaf springs here. We're going to do that with the supplied U-bolts. Use a little caution here. You don't want to get on those lines. You don't want to do any damage there. We're just going to put a flat washer on and then a nylon locking nut. And we'll do the same for the one on the front as well. 
Now we'll just tighten these up to start. Now we're going to torque down the hardware we just installed there. Again, just like all the other torque specs, they're going to be in the instructions. Now let's find our locations for our holes to go. We're going to bring them right here on each side of the license plate. It's up to you wherever you'd like to mount them, you feel free. Now if you are going to be using the location that's here, there's a metal plate. So kind of keep that in mind. Unless you want to drill through that metal plate, you'll want to avoid it. We're now just going to take the sharpest drill bit that we've got that happens to be the appropriate size and drill our two holes out. Now we're going to place the airline fitting and we've got a as you can see one of the nuts on there and we've got the star washer on there. So we'll bring that up, place it out through our hole. Then we're going to put on one of our rubber washers, then a flat washer, then our nut. Then you can adjust it a little bit, like I'm backing out that nut on the back to where it'll come out a little bit further, because we do want to get our air chuck on there and have enough room to operate it, certainly. And then we'll just tighten that down a little bit. Now we're just going to route our airline up towards our airbag. It's actually running it right down the frame rail here. Seems to be a perfect spot. Now let's just go through and secure our airline with a couple of zip ties. You just need it to be held up enough so it's not going to come down and we won't run the risk of it dragging or anything. You want to avoid any sharp edges, any moving objects as you route it. And then we'll figure out how much we're going to need here to get to our airbag. We'll add just a little bit extra to it and trim it off. That way when we get it up there, we'll have a spare coil. That way if we need to do any service to it or any repairs, we'll have a little bit of extra line. We'll now take the end of the tubing. As you can see, we've trimmed it off. We've made a nice flush cut. We've used a tubing cutter if you don't already have one at home. And we're just going to take that end and slide it right into that 90 degree angle. We need to push in firmly. And then we want to pull out on it just to make sure it's got a good connection. We can now just take the little bit of excess line we've got here Let's just secure it up so we don't have to worry about it ever coming down. Throw a zip tie on there, trim off the extra. And then we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Now we'll spray each of our fittings with a little bit of soapy water solution. We'll let it sit on there for just a few seconds and see if we have any bubbles that start to form. If we do, that's going to indicate that we've got a little bit of a leak there that we need to address. Now we'll just take our inflation caps and thread those right on to seal up the ends and make sure we don't get any dirt or dust or debris in there. Now that we've seen how it performs with the springs installed, that'll complete today's look at the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Air Helper Springs with the Internal Jounce Bumpers, part number AL88299 on our 2008 Toyota Tundra.